is the deal with the Derek Roll Kelly story? Government says it's all a lie, but the estate tonight proving otherwise. Good evening, everyone. I'm Clint Watson, and welcome to this special show tonight. Well, Derek Roll Kelly, now deceased, was a man who allegedly came into an inheritance said to reportedly be around $79 billion. You heard me, billion. It's a story that rocked the nation in the late 90s, but eventually faded away after it wasn't clear whether this money was actually for real or not. Now, recently, the story surfaced back into the media. But for his family and the estate, they never stopped fighting to get this reported money that they say was owed to them. It's been an uphill battle and a tough fight. Well, last month, the finance minister and deputy prime minister, Peter Trinquess, presented a communication for the first time that any government has touched the matter. What he said, though, he found quite interesting. Take a look. Mr. Speaker, neither the Ministry of Finance nor the Central Bank nor any other governmental entity were or are aware of this alleged inheritance that was supposedly left to Mr. Derek Rule. Further, and it would follow from this, neither the Central Bank nor any other public entity has, had, or does have knowledge or possession of any funds relating to this inheritance or alleged inheritance. Neither the Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank, the Attorney General, the Minister of National Security, nor any other relevant agency has been approached by any domestic or international entity on any matter relating to the investigation of this issue. Further, the government is not aware of any legal action that has been commenced in the Bahamas or any other jurisdiction in respect to what is alleged to have been the largest theft of money ever recorded in history. In history. Now we are in possession of documents tonight that paint a different story. Communications from lawyers and the Central Bank, as well as Royal Bank, back and forth between lawyers and financial institutions. Take a look at this first piece of document that we have here. Obviously, a communication to the Deputy Prime Minister himself, although saying that they received no information or have never heard about this. This is a letter dating back to the 10th of April, 2018, to the Honorable Peter Turnquest, outlining the case, outlining the concern and the reported bank accounts and the reported amounts that should have been in these accounts. This was sent to the Deputy Prime Minister on, the, on 2018 of April. Let's take a look at our next document. This, of course, is a letter written by Mr. Paul Moss, who was, of course, an attorney, one of the many attorneys working on this case. And this letter, of course, was sent to, as you can see there, it was sent on behalf of them, and it was being sent to financial institutions, legal counsel at the central bank, that is, at the time, making inquiries about this funds and on why the funds were transferred from the bank. As you see there, the bank listed there is Royal Bank of Canada, why the funds would have been transferred to them. We do have another piece of document I wanted to show you. And this, of course, is communication that was sent to the Royal Bank of Canada, Caribbean Holdings, obviously complaining and requesting information on the said accounts that were supposed to have been given to Mr. Derek Atkins. Now, we want to pause right there because and what's important here is allegedly there was no communication. But we're now seeing there has been a, some significant amount of communication. But that wasn't it. Minister of Finance, Peter Turnquist, went further. He was saying that if it indeed were true, the thousands of lawyers locally and internationally would want this case. If all of this money is true, why wouldn't lawyers be breaking down the door to try and find out how they can represent? They would pay specific attention. I want you to listen specifically to what the Deputy Prime Minister says at the end of the soundbite when he makes a comment to the Minister of Education. Listen. I mean, literally, thousands of lawyers national from across the world yeah, who would fly to the Bahamas or to the relevant jurisdiction today to commence action if 
$79 million. I'm sorry. $79 billion was on the line. Can you imagine what the fee on $79 billion? Let me show you who could admit us today. because you love the children. He was obviously speaking to the Minister of Education. But what's interesting is, the Roe family claims that one of their last lawyers, who was on the case, is now the Minister of Education, Jeff Lloyd. The same man who the finance minister, as you heard there, turned and made his remark in the House of Assembly grinning. Look at this graphic here. This graphic we're going to present to you is a communication that was sent to the court. A communication sent to the court by the estate's attorney. Go to the second page of that graphic and you will see the signature of that attorney. And we will get that for you because the second page of that graphic is the essential point we want to make. But if you read what that graphic is actually saying, and we will read it for you so you can have an idea of what the documentation, I'm actually going to prove it to you. I have it right here with me. That documentation you see on your screen is what I'm holding in my hand. It is a communication that was stamped, as you can see there, by the Supreme Court. And it's signed by the lawyer for the Derek Roll estate. It's essentially important that you see who signed this. This was a lawyer for the Derek Roll Kelly filing a motion to the Supreme Court for his funds. This is a signature of the attorney. The attorney is Jeff Lloyd. The same minister that sat next to the Deputy Prime Minister who made this communication in Parliament and even the Deputy Prime Minister pointing out to him, <laughs> even you would want to take the case, but you love the children too much. Little did the Deputy Prime Minister know Jeff Lloyd was already dealing with the case. Jeff Lloyd, as you would see, signed this document that was sent to the Supreme Court he was the attorney, and the estate has confirmed to us this was in, of course, this was this filing was of course done, as you can see the stamp on the on the original document, February of 2017. February of 2017. That would have been right before the general elections. The family said after the general elections, they alleged that Mr. Jeff Lloyd came to them and said, I can no longer continue with this fight because I am now a member of the government. What I find so interesting, though, is Minister Lloyd sat in the parliament while the Deputy Prime Minister spoke about this and never said, I've been involved in this. I was the attorney for this man. I am aware of actions being taken. If this is indeed not true, that this is all a story of lies, then why would Minister of Education Jeff Lloyd, before going to Parliament, be the lawyer of somebody seeking to get all this money if it's indeed a fabricated story? I want to bring in my legal contributor here because we're far from over. Ramona Farkas and Seymour joins me now because I can feel the heat is on right now. Right now. <laughs> I can see your expression. Shock. Yes. We, yes. Haven't, we haven't even gotten through May I, we have. I need to see this document. Please. I need to hold Please. and see this. Please. Be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. It is. It. Oh. Yes. You know, we got a lot of documents to get to tonight. We got quite a bit. Um, that's, there it is on your screen. Yes. There it is. Um, and the amount is the here amount. presented. Please tell me the amount, Ramona Farkas and Seymour. Please tell me the amount that was said by Mr. Jeff Lloyd. Thirty billion one hundred and seventy-eight million dollars. Thank you. This is this is real. It's here. It's there. It's there. So for the government, the deputy prime minister, to get up and make this presentation that. You know, 
there's no documentation, nobody has anything, um, there's been no communication. And you just saw letters from the Central Bank, the Royal Bank, you saw letters from attorneys going back and forth. And then he says, you know, anybody, if this was so, any lawyer want this case. And he looks over to his, to his learned friend, who's the Minister of Education, and said, even you, but no, not you, because you love the kids too much. But the Education Minister just sat there and said okay. nothing. Let's. As well, as your legal contributor, I'm just being handed the documents. Yeah. To point out, this is a probate document, mm -hmm. and this is Form 6. So this is one of the forms whenever we file for probate. There are a number of, of forms that we have to file. This is certainly one of the documents that would have been filed with respect to the bond in, in obtaining or the issuance of the bond in reference to the probate. Clearly, Jeffrey Lloyd of Skyland Lakes was of the opinion that this was the estimated worth of his, of Derek Clayton Rule, also known as Derek Clayton Rule Kelly's Correct. estate. Now, this document doesn't say that he would have had in his possession Correct. any documentation to prove this. Correct. Correct. But clearly the suggestion as you prepare the estate, you would ask the family, uh, bring in certain documentation as to the value of the estate, be it real estate, personal, um, insurances, bank, and, and let us ought to have gone out to the banks as well. So for him to place this amount here, and it's rather a specific amount. Very specific. Uh, very specific amount. Um, certainly I would have expected Albeit that was not his speech, right. but the chuckling exactly. and uh, That's the, the, the at. when the minister was in some way belittling the notion, exactly. I wouldn't have expected him to perhaps chime in with the chuckling and perhaps have a more serious persona as I, I saw the prime minister had a more serious persona at some point. Exactly. So I would have expected him um, particularly having such intricate knowledge of this, because I would think he would, obviously he must have some level of belief in his client's, in his client's claim, because you, I mean, one would not just file frivolous documents no. before the court, and this amount is quite large, so I would have expected a different reaction yeah. at the very least. And this is why, um, again, my concern is always, in the House of Assembly, when we come and present information as if it's facts, but we would have checked all of this. I mean, the person sitting right next to you was intricately involved, and you make it seem as if nobody's involved, this is just somebody's figment of their imagination, and the attorney next to you, the person next to you has was the attorney, to and has submitted. the Supreme Court um, that this man's estate is in excess of $30 billion. Exactly. We're just getting started. Um, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more documents to present to you on this. Stay close to watching me on the headlines. We're back after this.